<laughs> Frank Colignon, man. Frank Colignon, that guy that everybody love to hate, you know. I'm a humble guy, but it's another side to me, too, that I don't like to show. Unless they come at me the wrong way, and then, you know, yeah. It is what it is, but I've been really working on. I've been really working on my spirit and my humbleness and my um, relationship with God. So I've been I've been very much peaceful, a peaceful being uh, the last few years, man. Like Boss Week changed me. I see a lot of violence. I see us against each other. I see black people like you know we just don't love each other like we should. So. I try to change me before I can speak to somebody else to change them, you know what I'm saying? So I hope my words, you know, even when I be in a club on the mic, you know what I'm saying? I I try to speak some positiveness in people in the, in the midst of having fun. They listen closely, they listen deeply. I honestly be telling some good stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, one of my one of my one of my slogans is uh we ain't got a problem with you being broke. We got a problem with you staying broke. I mean, I'm saluting everybody, all hustlers, all go get us to keep getting money and hustle to stop hustling. If you out there doing what you do, just, you know, hustle to stop hustling. Build, build your empire. Don't be a dummy with that money. You know what I'm saying? So, it's Frank Colleone in the nutshell. Uh, what got me into the entertainment business? Uh, me and bruh, you know, we started out in this game, you know, we was in, in the streets doing our thing or whatever. And, you know, I, I always looked at my life as, you know, I, I wanted to grow into something different. I wanted to come out the street. I always had this concept, hustle, to stop hustling. You know, get it. Because, you know, I always had this this thing when they, when they used to call it the game. My thing was you either lose or you win in the game. And... How you win is you get out, you know what I'm saying? How you lose is you stay in. So I, I, I came up with some ideas a long time ago. I'm 17, 18. Um, I, I did some detailing shops. I did some printing and marketing. I did a lot of different stuff. Then me and my brother, we passed by this little spot called uh, Mystique on Main Street. And uh, we walked in there and these guys, uh, they was firemen and they, they had, um, they had like a house system in there and they had like four girls on stage dancing with no shoes on. <laughs> you know, it was funny. Me and my brother looked at each other and we were like, man, we could do something with this spot. So we, we made a proposition to the fireman guy. They liked the, the proposition. We had a lot of money then. So a shoebox full of money wasn't nothing. We just throw that on the counter and say, hey man, let's take over the spot. And we did it and I had no idea what came with the, the uh, adult entertainment. I did a lot of stuff that I had to learn through experience. When the vice came, things that I couldn't do, <laughs> we did it for enough time to get 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 a, get a, get, get a, uh, a branded name in the game. But then when they did come, they said, hey, you can't do X, Y, you can't do this, you can't do that. And that's how I really got into the uh, adult entertainment um, business. Ouch. I was, I was 18 in, my brother was 19. Um, and uh, it's been a journey, it seemed like it always find me. I don't really be looking for it, it always find me. Um, this is our fourth Gentleman's Club, Mascaras is, is, is our uh, club now. I still, I still at this day say our, because me and my brother always been 50-50 partners and I still consider him as my partner in this thing. But, uh, you know, we got two now, Gold Rush and Mascaras, and we got Bliss Lounge as a as a sports bar in our studio. We got a lot of stuff going on, you know, trying to build this empire for our family, but, you know, just in a nutshell, that's how I get into the entertainment business. Consistency. Consistency, faith, God. You gotta have God in anything and everything you do. That's, our, that's always been our foundation. Um, at putting God first and, and following that lead. Like, we all, you know, fall short, but, you know, I've always been the type that fall, get back up. i I never been a quitter. Uh, me and my brother, you know what I'm saying? Me and my brothers. I got a little brother too, little Marvin. Uh, 
uh, he had a situation where he, you know, he ain't walking right now, but he always been, um, he always been our little, our little guy. We used to look at and say, man, we, we gonna make sure you straight, man. He, he ain't wanna hear it. He got into his own thing too, but all that contributed to who I am today and what I look forward into becoming. Um, you know, all my, all my situations, my brother deaf, my little brother paralyzed. My sister had a stroke when my when my when, when my boss passed. All these different things that built me to, to continue to keep going. And then when we created uh, Boss Week after my boss passed, um, that really gave me uh, that really gave me my purpose, my my direction, because I wanted to be a part of a of an overall solution to some of the stuff that happened within our communities. A lot of my life experiences contributed to where I'm at today, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't successful there. I'm not where I want to be, but I'm, I'm on my way to where I'm going. But I'm gonna tell y'all this, man. Without pain, is you know, it's no strength without pain. It's nothing. Uh, pain is, is something that's, that, that you go through and, and have to endure. But if you know how to take that pain and apply it to your life and understand that God do, he take you through good things, take you through bad things. You can't just be happy for the good things. But those bad things are what make you who you are. You got to go through that. You got to go through that pain. You got to go through that struggle. You got to go through that headache. You got to go through them tears. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, hey amen. I still cry today because I go through pain. It's like a uh, it's like a life roller coaster. Some days you up, some days you halfway down, some days you all the way down, some days you it's just, it's a it's a constant turn and twist. But if you know how to take those shortcomings and turn them into uh, strength, you're a powerful person. Man, my brother always told me, man, if you learn how to master your emotions, man, you you're an unstoppable dude. How I do it. Me, I can only speak for me. I focus on what I'm doing, you know. One of the thing, one of the things that I hate the most when somebody come tell me about what another, what another club doing, what another artist doing, what another, um, what another man doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't put my thought process into what somebody else doing because that's when it's gonna take my focus away of what I'm trying to do. I don't care if a person, another club mate a million, two million dollars. If my quota, 200,000, I meet my quota, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, when I meet my quota, in that quota, I'm planning my next move. So it's all about preparation and planning, you know? And don't worry about what the next person doing. Now, if they try to attack me, of course, I'm going on defense. And, um, uh, and I'm a win, I'm a winner. But stay out of my way, but stay out your way. That's how I survive. My brother in 98, Marbos, he went to prison for eight years. Um, when he was gone, we had our first uh, gentleman's club, Mystique. And um, with Mystique, you know, I kept his Marbos name um, alive, keeping it pumping in, because I, I, I get on the mic, that's my pulpit, the microphone. In the, in the DJ booth, I, that's how I vent, that's how I release. When he was gone for those eight years, I kept his name alive, so when he came home, he was an instant, like, everybody was Marvel, 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 because I promoted him so much. He promoted himself, too. He, when he left, he was somebody, but when he came back, he was somebody. And that's hard to do when a person is gone for eight years, and they come back, they're like, oh, that's an old boy that had some money. It was different for him. When he came home, he was an instant, like, mob boss. Everybody wanted to touch him and shake his hand and be around him. And he was glowing. He had that glow on him. And when he passed away in 2011, six years after he um, got came home from bed prison, I thought that I had supposed to keep that same brand alive. Mob boss, mob boss, mob. So I started mob boss week. You know, we started mob boss week. And, um, with that MOB in the front and our history and Hustle House and all the stuff that came with all that back in the day, it wasn't, when we when we knocked on the school doors and, and we were trying to do something positive, 
they were like, oh no, y'all gangsters, we heard about y'all, we don't want no parts to Marvel boss weed. And I did it for three years. I fought it. I said, I'm still doing it. Marvel keeping my brother's name alive. They gonna, they gonna figure it out. But then God said, you know what? Me and my significant other, Miss Keisha, we started our nonprofit, which is his name, Lamarco Wilcox. And we took the MOB and we made it Men of Balance equals ball. So you gotta have balance. If you ain't got no balance, you just all over the place. You gotta have your good, you gotta have your we we human, so you're gonna have your good and bad. That's where the that's where the men of balance come from. And then from that, we took the MOB off, so we had ball suite. We made it plural. Like it's about the Ivory Ores, it's about the bigger rankings, it's about the young cashes, it's about the Levi Jordan, it's about the, the little Duvals, you know what I'm saying? It's about the Terrence Tysons. It's about people that, you know, walk as entrepreneurs and and, 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 and have an influence in this city. Because Boss Week was born in Jacksonville. That's why I wanted my city leaders and, and entrepreneurs and hustlers and go-getters to understand that this is not Mar Boss Week. It's not about a, 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 it's not personal. It's not about an individual. It's about a conglomerate, a conglomerate of people that have the power to influence.